Welcome back to Recovering From Everything, a podcast for everyone who has ever had anything happen to them ever. Welcome to my living room, this big ass plant that actually was like three little stalks of leaves uh, about seven years ago. It's a little bit my divorce plant um, because when I moved into my uh, first apartment, uh, someone gifted it to me. It was very small. It fit into like this small ass pot Um, and she is thriving and honestly a little bit annoying because she dangles, but I did try to like tie it up a little bit so she's not falling over the place. Anyways, this is this corner of uh, my space. Um, I got a new couch, which I am sitting on, and I have returned from my trip to the great state of Tennessee, uh, the volunteer state, I learned. And uh, I also went to a health conference in Arizona the week after, which you guys know. So that's why I've been MIA. Uh, but I am back and I am happy to be back. I've got my essentials here, my vape juice, my leftover cold coffee, which I will probably not be drinking the rest of, and my water. The universe has been doing some really cool things to me and for me lately. And so this is the woo woo episode. Let's go. Okay, I don't often talk about my entrepreneurial, 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 entrepreneurial journey in a, a, a public forum. Um, I save that for when I am uh, crying to my uh, coaches or um, you know privately with a couple of friends. Um, cause you can't talk about this stuff with, with everyone. I will start with, there is certainly a, um, safety that I had, that I thought I had robbed myself of, of working for someone, for working for an established company not that I'm not established. I mean, it's, it's been a few years now, but have you ever seen that, uh, that meme or that, or that phrase of, um, I'm, I need an adultier adult. It's like, I'm an adult, but I, I still need an adultier adult. That's kind of what it's like to, uh, work on your own. It's like, I, it's much easier. It's much safer when someone is just telling me what I need to be doing. So uh, for a long time, um, it kind of felt like I missed, not even I missed, because I definitely don't miss working for um, anybody, but I was very aware of the fact that nobody was telling me what to do. And so everything was kind of left for me to figure out by myself. And about a year ago, I started with working with this coaching company. It's for health coaches in the online space. And so with that came a number of coaches um, kind of guiding me. Basically, every type of coach that one would need to run a successful online business and help the most amount of people possible, which ultimately is my goal with these coaches um, and an actual like online training program. It's heavily, heavily influenced and shaped the way that I run my business. They are the reason um, that I, I switched to group. I had been doing group work when I was running the inpatient rehab program. I love group. I did groups during the day. Um, on you know Tuesday nights, I ran an aftercare program for the graduates, and that was a that was a group dynamic as well. And like those groups sometimes were massive, and I loved it so so very much. And so when I started my business, for some reason, I switched to one on one because that's what I thought people did, which doesn't make any damn sense because a I felt so alive working in a group, but uh, B, I also was helping multiple people at the same time. And 
what is like absolutely priceless is they were helping each other. So, and and I'm guilty of this in, in different parts of my life. I just kind of fell into what I thought was supposed to be happening, which is when you are, you know, when you have a private practice, you work privately. And despite having a group, it's still a private practice. Initially, when I was kind of like really ramping up my business and I was paying, you know, a bajillion dollars for for ads and watching them fail and refreshing my ads manager over and over and over again, like the hyper vigilance, um, the anxiety, the and if you're an entrepreneur, you'll get it. Like, you know, there's that saying of like you have to spend money to make money. And it's like initially at the beginning, all I was doing was spending, spending, spending. I wasn't sleeping. I was crying all the time. My nervous system was so dysregulated. Um, it was, uh, it was hilarious. It was hilarious. It was not great to experience, but now I'm like, literally nothing is different except for me. I'm still on this like extremely terrifying yet rewarding entrepreneurial um, journey. And the only thing that's different is me. Um, I've grown. I've stepped into who I am. I've I've really, really stepped into the way that I uh, help women move away from alcohol. Um, I'm certainly finding my voice. A testament to that is that I switched the um, podcast from not just audio to video. And I wouldn't necessarily chalk it up to, oh, I'm so much more confident. It's that I've been collecting evidence that what I'm doing is working. And the way that I collect that evidence is in my journal. So I started some, doing something really cool uh, it's been about three months now, and probably the first month was just kind of like practice. And it was a lot of like affirmations and gratitude. And I was using an app to kind of guide my thinking um, for how I should be thinking in order to make life a little bit more pleasant for myself. Um, but probably the last like two months or so, I, I do my journaling first thing in the morning, gratitude, affirmations, uh, manifestations, um, the woo-woo shit. And throughout the day, as I notice things, I'll just like jot them down in the margins. So it becomes a morning journaling of, I know this to be true. Even if in my heart of hearts, I'm like, oh, is it? Is it going to come true? I still like, and I smile while I journal and I let myself kind of like feel excited and I feel fearful too. Um, but the morning journal is like, I know this to be true. And then throughout the day in the margins, I write evidence of like how that is true. So I just want to give you a few examples because the way that you view yourself and the world, it's all from like the inside, right? And so if you can start to master and adjust what's happening on the inside of you, right? In your heart and your brain, crazy shit starts to happen. And I knew this and I knew this because even prior to this, um, again, I'm careful about how I speak about it and I'm careful of who I speak about it to, but um, some of you know and some of you may have already clocked. I I am a spiritual person. I am very spiritual. I am fucking next level now, but um, I've always been a spiritual person in some way, shape, or form. I've been reading my horoscope. Shout out to Phil Booth, who used to have the best horoscope column in the Toronto Star. Um, I have been reading Phil Booth since I was a young child. Uh, the wee age of 12 is my first kind of memory of, I read my horoscope every day. It's played a, a big part for me in really different ways. I find when when things are really tough for me, that's the thing that I turn to. That's um, my craving essentially is um, some sort of 
sign or, you know, looking up to the sky and, and talking and praying and asking and thanking. And, um, I'm always sort of craving divine kind of leadership. And I think that's what was missing when I left my corporate job to come off on my own. I was doing a little bit of manifestation work, but I wasn't supported. I wasn't in a group of people who uh, were in the same boat as me and could could talk about kind of like the nitty gritty stuff, um, both about business and numbers, but also about mindset stuff, um, how to show up as my best self for my clients, um, things like that. So finding this coaching company um, has, I mean, it's changed the way that I I run my business. It's it it actually makes me feel like an actual true you know CEO founder entrepreneur, um, but it's it's shaped me as just like a person. Well, let me just let me get to this like the weird woo woo thing that happened this week. So before I left for, I was basically uh, away from work. I worked a little bit here and there, but. I wasn't doing the bulk of my work for two weeks in September. So I went to Tennessee with my daughter. Um, I was gone for almost a week and then I was home for a few days and then I went to Arizona and and that was like a five-day total, you know, with traveling and whatever. Prior to um, going to Tennessee with Tennessee, as you may remember, I had been looking at some new furniture for our living room. So the couch that I had was the couch that I got when I moved out of my matrimonial home when I, um, you know, started the separation. Great couch. Love that couch. Had a pullout on it. So uh, even the pullout couch, like my daughter and I would pull that out and watch movies together. And had her friend sleep over. That's where they would sleep. That couch saw me through uh, uh, an apartment, um, buying my first house, uh, separation, divorce, you know, new boyfriends. Um, a eight week period of intense depression where I just like lied on this thing all day. And this thing had like, it was a sectional and one of the sections was so long. And so it was like, you could just lie there. It had like the best spot for just like lying and, uh, doing a little, little couch rot for eight weeks. Um, as you waited for your depression meds to kick in, that was a long time ago. Ultimately I had outgrown that couch emotionally. So I'd been looking for, and, and spatially, to be honest, it was a massive fucking couch and my house is so small. Um, and I just, it didn't feel right anymore. Same with this beautiful, uh, giant square ottoman that I had purchased. And I was so excited about this ottoman. And it was like, I remember I like got it on sale. It was $80. And I remember at the time just being like, oh my gosh, like, I just felt like being able to make that purchase at the time I was in in my life was like a really big deal. So I like really loved this ottoman. I really loved this couch, but they just started to feel like I was suffocating. Like they just didn't work anymore. They were both too big and they were both just, they were just there and they just took up so much space. And so for like a few months, I kept looking for a new couch and couldn't really, um, find the, the couch, the perfect couch, like the one, right? Um, finally I did. First week of September, I found this couch. I added it to my Wayfair cart, knowing that I was going to be away for two weeks and that I would have to wait a little bit to purchase it because the delivery time was just like a few days. So in the meantime, I'd also found a beautiful new little coffee table that is like fully functional for our living room and a new rug as well. I'd had this sort of shaggy kind of like a gray carpet that I had bought when I moved in. And that thing also was just like, it's, it's, both too big and not big enough. And it's like, it, it just like never felt clean anymore because I've got two dogs and it just like absorbs everything. And there was this path where like my dogs would lie and where we would walk that was just like 
you're literally never going to be clean again. I, I tried to clean it. It, it didn't work. Anyways, so a new rug, a new coffee table, and a new couch is what I needed for our living room um, because there was a shift where the things that were currently in here felt wrong now, if that makes sense. And it's like those that get it, get it. I was no longer that person anymore. I told you, it, it's the woo-woo shit. And if you get it, you get it. Um, and if I sound nuts to you, just wait for the next episode or go back and find another one. But so new rug, new coffee table. They're in. My daughter and I set them up. It's beautiful. We're like halfway there. My couch is still here. We're like, oh, we're halfway there. I come home for the three or four days between my trips in September and I purchase the couch. So the couch gets delivered. I get back from my trip. I'm trying to arrange for my old couch to get picked up. One of my buddies who lives just across the street, I just gave it to him for free. The the kind of like hysterical thing is that when my ex and I were moving out of our uh, matrimonial home, um, we had this other couch that was in our bedroom that we had like acquired for free. It was like kind of like this vintagey couch. It was like really cool, but neither of us had any use for it. It was like, it looked cool. It was like not very functional though. And we ended up giving it to this same person, um, again, for free. And he, you know, picked it up one day and, and he still has it in his, um, barbershop. So, I message him. He's like, oh my God, I've been manifesting a new couch. I'm like, well, it's not like new, new, but it's new for you. And it's in really good shape. And it is a pullout bed. Um, and you know, it's clean. It's really fucking comfortable. And it's the perfect couch for someone else. He, I'm like, but you're going to need help. You're going to need like a strong friend or someone with uh, a truck or something. Cause this, the pullout side of the couch is so freaking heavy. Um, he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll figure something out. No problem. So in the meantime, we have these three boxes sitting in our house of like our new couch. So there's this like weird pull that Ten and I both have. And one night, it was like the first or second night that she was back with me after like we'd come home from our trips and we're just kind of settling back into our routine. And I remember like finishing work and just being like, honey, I really am like craving to put together our couch. And she like jumps up. She's like, oh my God, me too. So we're like, fuck it. Let's just do it. So we spend an hour um, putting together our new couch, this couch that I'm sitting on. First of all, we're like, holy shit, this thing is massive. Like neither of us had any idea like actually how big it was going to be. The pictures did not do it justice. It's huge. Um, for two fairly small people. This thing is massive. Um, so it's like sitting in one section of my living room and this other couch is sitting in its spot that it's always been. If you're spiritual, you know where I'm going with this. The past and my future sitting in the same space. Energetically, that is a fucking weird thing. It is a weird thing. If you know, you know. If you get it, you get it. It is a weird friggin' thing. So we loved our new couch. We were obsessed with it and we are, um, we're sitting on it, whatever. She goes to her dad's last weekend and I'm like, my plan this weekend is to fully shut the door on the past and, uh, settle into my future. And I, I know some of you are like, it's just a fucking couch. It is not just a fucking couch. It is the straddling of two worlds. It is keeping one foot in the past and one foot in the future. And you can't do that. You, like, you can't do that. It doesn't work. You're not going to get anywhere. You're just going to be like stuck in this weird limbo. And I was like, no, I came back from, I had a really great September, the first week of September that I did work. Uh, the business did really freaking well. I, I got a chance to help a bunch of new people. Um, really wonderful women too. Like I just felt like I was just being blessed and blessed and blessed with these like 
wonderful, perfect clients. And you guys listen to the podcast. And if you enrolled with me in early September and your names both start with K, just know that you are, you are truly my perfect client. And, and I am so grateful and blessed to have met both of you. So September, the beginning of September was fucking awesome. And then I come home from this health conference, like just vibing so high. I feel like I'm going to explode like to a point where I was like crying because I was like, I don't feel like anything is the same anymore, right? So the following weekend, I'm like, fuck it, this couch has got to go. So remember I told my buddy, like you need to get a big strong friend because this couch is insanely fucking heavy. I figured out how to move this thing out of my house by myself. I nearly died. I nearly died. But I did it by myself and I arranged it out in my carport. I organized everything. It wasn't just like this big chaotic thing. It was very, there was like a a lever system at one point that I had sort of figured out. Kid's a genius. Anyways, I moved this couch out of my house. I set up my new couch and fully just let myself step into this version of my life because it's it's not, it's not what it was this past year. I am not who I was this past year. Um, and there has, there is so much evidence of that. If I allow myself to see that it's the woo woo shit. Saturday, September 30th. Um, I had, uh, tracked, uh, how many new clients I had uh, that month because it was the last day of the month. And then also in the margins, I wrote it, I noted, old couch gone. I'm so grateful for that thing. That like that couch supported me, supported my daughter, supported my dogs, supported, you know, my little family for seven years. Seven years almost exactly, actually. Yeah, because I moved out in September of 2017 and it's September of 2024. So uh, seven years. Wow, I can't believe it's been that long. Um, Oh, I've been divorced longer than I was married. Yeah, because that was six years. Anyway, I suppose the point of this is it is uh, scary and painful to allow yourself to step into a new version of yourself. Some of the uh, the women I work with just have this like, um, and, I, and I can see it because I'm the same, have this kind of like death grip on um, our lives and ideas about ourselves and even something like a couch, an ottoman, and a carpet. I think sometimes it's good to take an inventory of your life. And inventory, I don't mean that in any sort of sexy way. I mean like have a list that you write down or a list running in your head of what is currently in your life and being very, very honest about whether those things are acting as anchors or whether they are things that you're future, higher self put in your life? Does your future self have that thing in her life? She certainly doesn't have my old couch because Brent's got it. So I have at least three months of daily consistent um, journaling. Uh, There's, it's gratitude affirmations. It's not like a, I'm so mad at, or this wasn't fair or whatever. It's gratitude affirmations. It's random pictures. (laughs) I draw a mean stick figure. Um, It's all forward thinking stuff and I'm not surprised that 
I kind of had to do a massive overhaul of my living room because I I want to be the person I am in my journals and in order to be her, the universe is going to make me let go of a ton of stuff. Couch, ottoman, carpet, people, ideas about myself. If I am going to become who I want to be, I need to do things differently in order to have that. Something one of my coaches always says, be, do, have. I have to be this person. I have to do the things that she does in order to have what she has. So I got a new couch. It was on sale too. Like it was a steal. I I truly cannot even believe I found this couch. And it has two sectionals. So one little side for me and one little side for 10. Snacks in the middle. I suppose an analysis, a a very practical analysis of how um, energetically uh, when you are shifting and changing what that could look like as evidence in your day-to-day. Everything is different. I'm different. My programming is different. Um, I am determined to help as many women as possible. Last night, my daughter's like, why don't you help men? And I'm like, listen, I've helped so many men over the years where I'm like, I, I have a special spot in my heart for women, especially women in their second half of life, which is very like, can you tell me you have mummy issues without telling me you have mummy issues? Anyways, 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 um, I want to keep helping women. And in order for me to be the most effective coach, I have to continue to allow myself to grow and allow myself to let go of shit that no longer serves me. If I'm expecting them to do that, I have to continue to do that. And sometimes sometimes I think about like I'm 12 years sober and that feels very far removed from um, – the initial part of my journey where the fixation is very much on like, you know, let go of alcohol, how to let go of alcohol, how to deal with cravings, blah, blah, blah. But I think what I um, have realized and what I say all the time, I just maybe forget it, is that the, the thing doesn't matter. Alcohol, a couch doesn't fucking matter. The practice of letting go of, of things People, um, behaviors, you know, practices, attitudes, ideas, it all, doing that, letting go requires the, the same thing, um, an openness to looking forward and a, uh, tolerance for pain. Daily gratitude affirmation journaling and write your evidence in the margins because it's always there. It's always there. You are always, always, always getting what you ask for. And sometimes it looks like moving a couch out of your house by yourself. Thanks for listening or watching another episode of Recovering From Everything, a podcast for everyone who has ever had anything happen to them ever including the spiritual overhaul of getting new furniture. Hope you have a very woo-woo week, and I will see you soon.